days almost towards the end we are the last chapter of bhagavad gita and it is all due to sameshwar prabhu's initiative that we all can every day weekdays evening uh, have this sangha of bhagavad gita and we get to learn hari krishna om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om namo bhagavate vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskritya Naram Chayavam Narotamam Devim Saraswatam Vyasam Tato Jayamudirate Nashta Prayashwa Bhatreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttamashtoke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtuki Hare Krishna So dear devotees, I'm going to link up with Veda Base. If someone can please confirm that you can see my screen and and also uh, hear me properly yes proji thank you prabhu brahmana kshatriya visham shudranam cha parantapa karmani prabhi bhaktani swabhava prabhavair gune brahmana kshatriya visham shudranam cha parantapa Karmani Parvi Pravid Bhaktani Sabhava Prabha Vair Gunai Brahmana Shatriya Visham Shudrana Cha Parantapa Karmani Prabhi Pravi Bhaktani Sabhava Prabha Vair Gunai Brahmana Shatriya Visham Shudrana Cha Parantapa Karmani Pravid Bhaktani Sabhava Prabhavair Gune Hare Krishna. Will some devotee please chant the shloka? Don't feel shy, don't worry about the pronunciation. Please make the attempt. Okay. Can, can I try Prabhuji? Of course, please do. Okay. <clears throat> Brahmana Chatriya Visham Sutra Nam Cha Param Tapa Karmani Pravi Bhaktani Sva Bhav Prabha Vergune. Excellent, Suman Mataji. Anybody else? I'll go. Okay, Sachirani. Brahmana Kshatriya Visham Shudranam Chaparam Sapa Karmani Pravi Bhaktani Swabhava Prabhavir Guna. Very nice. Anyone else? Okay. So now we'll read the synonyms translation by Srila Prabhupada. This verse has no purpose. It is self-explanatory. Uh, however, based on the Acharya's teachings, we will uh, delve into it a little more so that our understanding gets better. Synonyms, Brahmana, of the Brahmanas. Kshatriya, the Kshatriyas. Visham, and the Vish Vaishyas. Shudrana. Of the Shudras, Cha and Paramtapa, O subduer of the enemies, Karmani, the activities, Pravibhaktani are divided, Swabhava, their own nature, Prabhavai, born of, Gunai, by the modes of material nature. Translation Brahmanas, Kshatriyas, Vaishyas, and Shudras are distinguished by the qualities born of their own nature in accordance with the material birth. O oh, chastiser of enemies. I'll read this again. This point is very, very important and we'll get more into it. Brahmanas, Kshatriyas, Vaishyas and Shudras are distinguished by the qualities born of their own nature in accordance with the material modes. 
O chastiser of the enemies. Hare Krishna. So we will now sing the Mangala Charan prayers. This is to invoke the auspiciousness and the blessings of Sri Guru, Acharyas, Parampara, and Sri Krishna, that whatever we speak be in line with Guru, Sadhu, and Shastra, and nothing based on concoction of this mind. Hare Krishna. O Magnyam Timirandasya Kyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Kuruve Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Pishtam Stapitam Yena Putale Swayam Rupa Kada Mayam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Kuru Shri Uta Padakamalam Shri Kurun Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sakrajatam Sahakana Raguna Thambitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padam Sahakana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitamscha E Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Banduja Katpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastate Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Rade Brinda Baneshwari Krishna Banu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vanchakalpa Tarupyascha Kripa Sindhubya Evacha Patita Nam Pavane Pyo Vaishnavetro Namo Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Putale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Kauravani Pracharane Nirvishesh Shunyavati Paschatya De Shatarane Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Kadathar Shri Vasati Kaurabhakta Brinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna So thank you once again for joining today's systematic study of Bhagavad Gita. Some of you are new to this forum and some of you have been here since the past couple of years since it started. So a brief explanation that before we do uh, the seva of giving class, we always say the Mangala Charana prayers and the Mangala Charan prayer invokes the blessings and the benedictions of the Guru and all the Acharyas coming in the Parampara system all the way to Krishna, uh, so that whatever is being spoken, you know, is bona fide. Uh, in Chaitanya Charitamrit, uh, when Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami, uh, in the first chapter, he, uh, before he begins the biography, the pastimes and the characteristics of Lord Chaitanya, uh, he says the shloka, uh, Granthera Rambakari uh, Mangala Charana Guru Vaishnava Bhagavan Karine Smarana. That we say the Mangala Charana, thinking of the Guru, the Vaishnava, and Bhagavan Krishna Chaitanya. Uh, and on that basis, you know, the uh, discourse or whatever we are sharing, uh, that we could be empowered by their mercy. Hare Krishna. So today, what we're going to be looking at, this whole thing is now, you know, we are in these three modes uh, that control knowledge, action, and the performer. Uh, very quickly, the three modes are the mode of uh, goodness, the mode of passion, and the mode of ignorance. And in different uh, combinations, it's exhibited in different persons at different times. So there is no one who is uh, in the material condition, who is in the pure goodness or pure passion or purely um, ignorant. There is one or more at given time. It uh, takes precedence, time, place, circumstance, right? So our learning points today is we'll understand what is the Varnashrama Dharma. Very important. And especially many of us from uh, 
India would be familiar with this. It's popularly, wrongly known as the caste system and all the nonsense that followed through with uh, the exploitation of this caste system. So we'll understand what, according to the scriptures, what Varnashram Dharma really is all about. Then the traits of a Brahmana, there are these four uh, uh, Varanas, uh, Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya and Shudra. We'll go a little bit more detail into them, understanding what are their roles, responsibilities, characteristics. And then we'll have a group discussion that all of us have some kind of a tendency and then how this tendency can be utilized in service of Krishna and his devotees, the principle of Yukta Vairagya, which our Acharyas have given us, meaning to say that anything and everything can be used in the service of Krishna. Of course, having said that, there are opportunities and then there are challenges. Challenges are in terms of our own mindset. Challenges are in terms of our uh, habits, uh, conditioning, whatever be that case. So how we would be able to maximize, leverage the opportunities, which brings us closer uh, to Krishna and the challenges, how we can overcome and get even closer to him. Okay, so this is what we will uh, cover in today's class. As always, my humble obeisances to His Grace, Gauranga Priya Prabhu. He has written Bhagavad Gita notes, a very nice compilation, summary compilation, which gives the analytical study of Bhagavad Gita, chapter by chapter, verse by verse, how everything links to each other and the flow. So anyone is interested, uh, you know, please go on the internet and look for BG notes. Uh, you'd be able to download a free PDF copy or you have any difficulty, you know, please write me and I can uh, send you uh, that uh, copy. Hare Krishna. Okay, so let's understand what this Varanashram Dharma is all about. First point to know, there are certain, like, you know, you set the basis. It is not man-made. It is a natural classification. Not man-made means that this is what has been prescribed by the Vedas. We know the Vedas are the words of Bhagwan, correct? And it is natural. It is not something which is an artificial imposition put on us. That a group of people got together and said, okay, we'll be Brahmanas, let these guys be Shudras. And no, it is who we are. And based on that, right, the natural classification, the distinction of the type of uh, people, type of attitude, their mentality. So it's based on our innate inbuilt tendencies, which is governed by these modes of material nature. Based on the innate tendencies, we have certain uh, qualities that we display. So we know, right, iska nature aisa hi hai. This person is like that only. There are some who are very aggressive. There are some who are very calm. There are some who are so gentle. There are some who are very uh, budhvant, very uh, intellectual. And uh, there are some who are just, you know, engaged in doing um, labor. That's what is there, uh, sets them going. So whatever be that case, uh, the Varnashram Dharma is based on our tendencies. These tendencies which are governed and controlled by the three modes of material nature. What Varanashram does, Dharma does is, it focuses on responsibilities. Fine. If you have this particular tendency, then this is your responsibility. So there is what we call the social order and also the spiritual classification and bringing this together the purpose of varanashram dharma is so that we can get elevated our consciousness which is material consciousness can get elevated to spiritual consciousness also known as krishna consciousness so when we do this and we focus on the responsibility each person remains in his or her own sandbox then what happens is naturally Everyone else around in society, their rights also get fulfilled. Each one is doing what he or she is meant to do. There is no encroaching on anybody else. Today, what we see is everyone is stepping on everybody's toes because that all-pervading greed that is there with all of us, I mean myself, mine, at no matter whatever it is, I'm going to. So if I have to get into somebody else's space, I will do it. 
So this is what Varanashram Dharma, it organizes the society based on our natural tendencies. And then as we age, as the body ages, based on that, there are certain um, certain uh, ashramas, certain uh, characteristics that we do, that we are supposed to uh, do our responsibility. So this is what it does. Now, when you go through the Varanashram Dharma system, each person can realize his potential to the maximum. Otherwise, we are always living, chasing some dream or we are living somebody else's dream. I may have the innate talent to be a musician, but parents, uh, relatives, society forces us, me to become a doctor. I haven't realized my full potential. Of course, I may be a doctor, but grudgingly so. And that is why we find, you know, there are so many people who are engaged in their profession simply because you could say, victim of circumstances, given a choice, they'd rather be doing something else. That's why, thank God it's Friday, it's such a big day, end of the work day. People don't love their work. They say, right, uh, if you love your uh, job, if you love what you do, you'll never have to work a day in your life. So, Varnashram Dharma helps us to realize a full potential, who we are meant to be. The US Army has the slogan, be all you can be. Way before this slogan, Varanashram Dharma already had, our uh, Vedas, our scriptures had already uh, implemented this method to realize your best uh, potential. Then also to note that each Varana and each Ashrama has its own unique Dharma. Dharma is a duty or an obligation. Dharma has many meanings, but in this sense, it is your duty, obligation, responsibility. Unique. So if I belong to a particular class, right, it is extremely beneficial for me if I work within that. The moment I step out of it, it becomes detrimental for me and others. Then what is happening? You see this third point over here, fulfilling rights of others. We get stepping onto each other's toes. So for example, for example, a grasti, a grasti, his responsibility is to earn money. His responsibility, his her responsibility is to procreate, to raise Krishna conscious children and support the other three ashrams of Brahmana, Vana Prastha, retiree and the sannyas. Now, if a sannyasi starts doing a grasti's job, it's suicidal for that sannyasi. Sannyasi is not supposed to associate with women. They are not supposed to have any possessions, can't be earning. Correct? Or vice versa, if a grasti, you know, artificially says, ah, no, I'm leaving everything, I've become a sannyas. It, it's going to be havoc. So each varna and ashram has its own unique responsibility and role to play because what's beneficial for one is detrimental to the other. This is what Prabhupada says about the Varnashram Dharma. Unless the human society comes to the standard of executing the Varnashram Dharma, it is not human society. It is an animal society. No regulative principles. The animals, they have no regulative principles. But human society must follow regulative principles. This is called Varnashram Dharma. See how important these regulative principles are. Otherwise, we are just like animals, sophisticated animals. What do animals do? Everything dovetails into four major things. Eating, sleeping, mating, defending. Animalistic. That's, that's their tendency. That's their natural position. We, with the greater intellect, Atharto Brahma Jigyasa, the purpose is to have self-realization and through self-realization, God-realization and re-establish the relation we all have with him, an eternal relation. But we use this intellect 
just to be a sophisticated sleeping, eating, mating, and defending. The animal fights with his claws, defends with his claws and teeth. We defend ourselves with bullets and bombs. Yeah, just sophisticated, but anything is same, same mentality. They procreate on the street. We procreate in the privacy of the bedroom. But as time goes by, you now see public acts of display. People are, I mean, less said the better. So we are like sophisticated animal. Prabhupada said dog runs on four legs, man runs on four wheels. And you see this dog-like mentality, road rage. Someone cuts you off, wow, 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 wow. We, people kill in road rage. So that is what it is. So until unless there's no regulation, if we don't regulate ourselves, if we don't discipline ourselves, of course, there's conditioning. All of us have conditioning. But we should make that attempt. And slowly, slowly, these attempts build up our discipline, our determination. But we have to take that attempt. Otherwise, you know, we could have all the information in the world and use it just for eating, sleeping, mating, defending. Krishna Namanand Prabhu has said, information is meant for transformation. If it doesn't elevate a consciousness, what use is it? Just being a little more sophisticated. Because end of the day, all the sophistication becomes a big zero. Few days back, Simeshwar was saying, Prabhu said, right, he gave the example of Alexander the Great, how much he acquired, how much he conquered. But on his deathbed, he said, make my coffin with two holes and my arms out so that the world can see I'm going empty handed. But if we elevate our consciousness, we take that with us. We take that with us. So regulative principles, Varanashram Dharma is meant for regulating, it's meant for discipline. And when we follow these do's, these don'ts, it puts us on the track, the right path and progress towards who we are and what we can be, all that we can be. That is Varanashram Dharma. Now, this Varanashram Dharma, if you see, <coughs> excuse me, okay, it's the classification. You see, there are these three words, Varana, Ashram, and Dharma. Varana is like a classification, social organization for society. Ashram is stages of life. As Dhanurvar Maharaj has explained, Ashram is a place where all your needs can be met. Now, of course, we have a refuge, like our home. You go to office, you come back from home, you're in a different mindset and you get relaxed. Of course, people come. <laughs> That's conditioning. People come home from work and then they pour themselves a drink some alcoholic beverage because it kind of calms the nerve, physical. Some people just come and they're relaxed to be home. As time goes by, all the pressures of work also follows into home. And many a time it also invades that personal time where you're doing office work. So you work in the office from whatever, eight to six, seven, come home, reach home at 8, 9, and continue for another few hours. Family life, children, everything is at the side. But all the same, you know, when you have your ashram, is where all your needs can be met. We come home, we have these four walls protecting us against the elements and whatever else there is. So we feel kind of secured. However, that shelter necessary Necessary, but not permanent. Real shelter is the shelter of our consciousness. Where not only the physical and the gross and the subtle body, gross body is this physical that we see, subtle body is the mind intelligence and the uh, false ego. Not only the gross and the subtle body, but also our spirit and consciousness. What about that? That is starving. That's the real shelter. So when you take spiritual shelter of Krishna, who is all in all, full, everything, there's nothing lacking in him. When you are connected, there is nothing that you will lack for. Physically, emotionally, and spiritually. 
So Krishna is the real ashram, shelter, where all your needs can be fully met. Keep this in mind, dear devotees. And dharma, what is dharma? We hear this dharma, right? Dharma has many uh, meanings. One of it is essence. So for example, the essence of sugar is sweetness. You cannot separate sweetness from sugar. If sweetness is not there, it's no longer sugar. If spiciness is not there, it's no longer chili. If wetness is not there, it is no longer water. That defining characteristic of that thing is dharma, the essence, also the beauty. So if you look at this, what is the dharma of us? We are the living entity. What is a dharma? Jivera swarupo hai, Krishnera nitya das, Chaitanya charitamrita. What does it mean? The swarup, the form, the um, characteristic, the essence is nityara Krishna das, eternally the servant. So we see we are always serving. We are serving our own desires. We are serving our family. We are serving our bosses. We are serving society. We are serving this. We are serving that. That's the natural inclination and tendency. Because the part, we are part, is always serving the whole. So, var ashram dharma. So, this is the meaning of var ashram dharma. And now let's see how it is organized. <clears throat> the first, you're familiar with this word, brahmana. Brahmana, the one who is pursuing the brahman. Yeah? The intellectual class. And if you use the analogy of the body, it's the head, the brain. Kshatriya, Bala, strength. This class are the compared to the arms of the body. Vaishya, sustenance, compared to stomach. Shudra, labor class, compared to the legs. So we have these four varanas and the ashram based on the age progression of the human being is first one is brahmacharya, student life. Zero to from birth to about five, seven years, the child is in home care. Then of course, in the good old days, times gone by, they used to go to the guru's ashram and live with the guru. And the Guru Patni. So the Guru and the Guru Patni become his mother and father. And they train the child in the material and spiritual sciences. So that whatever is his proclivity, whatever is his uh, natural tendency is utilized properly. So that is the student life and that is up to 25 years of age. Then he enters into the grihastha or the householder, 25 to 50 years old. Grihastha, all of us are grihastha, is you have a family, you have a wife, you have children, your relatives, and so on and so forth, right? And there is some occupation that we do. Then you have the retiree from 50 to 75. Then the retiree is done with all his householder responsibilities and now focuses on more and more towards the spiritual path. Finally, you have the sannyas where the person renounces everything, everything and mind, body, words exclusively focused in the service of Krishna. So these are the four stages, ashramas, and these are the four, on the left, are the four Varanas. Varanashram. Yeah? Any questions so far? Yeah, Prabhuji, Hare Krishna, Dhanur Krishna, all Goshi, Prabhuji. Prabhuji, I have one question quickly. So Prabhuji, if I have to relate this Varna, right, in our, uh, you know, I'm from IT background. So can I say this Varna is like a profession sort of, okay, I do Brahmana, I am unknown, I want to be Kshatriya or I want to be Vaishya, I want to do business or I want, no, I cannot do anything. I just be Shudra, 
right so it's like a you know category which i choose i know my my intelligence supports me to be a brahman i can do only yagya or i can be, be uh, you know read scriptures preach on that right mm-hmm. I, i i cannot i cannot be jack of all right i can only be one or uh, that there's a message right prabhu ji only if we can take yes. choose you, you have a natural tendency and based on that tendency so if there are people who are intellectual we'll get into the traits of a brahmana kshatriya and the other uh, classes uh, what traits they have and based on the one which is dominant in our personality according to that according to that we get in this so your status as a brahmana you could be a student you could be a householder you could be a retiree and you could be a renunciate but that's the path you know and gradually so if you see here till your student age and your householder and another point uh, bimal prabhu is it is not a choice that we make today i can have a choice to do intellectual work and if um you know they have these guys called think tanks and thought leadership of course in a material sense i'm giving an example and tomorrow if circumstances get bad i could be doing uh, a shudra work which is uh, a menial service to others i could be a taxi driver another point to note in kal yug as prabhupad says all of us are shudras we may be doing uh, vaishya we may be doing kshatriya but or even brahmana but that mentality is shudra hard labor chasing after this and that so in the next slide your uh, question will further be explained so anyone else has another question or a comment So, so Prabhuji, one quick question. No, again on this related uh-huh. topic only. Uh-huh. So, can a Brahmana, right? He 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 choose a profession of Brahmana. I Means he is doing Brahmana work, right? And he will be for some period of time in a student, and then he will may become married, right? And then he may go for Vana Prastha, and then he may adopt Sanyas, right? So, mm-hmm. one Brahmana is going through all this ashrama, right? So, for twenty years he has done. He was a Brahmacharya. Then he got married, and then till for. Uh, to another 30 years he was in the married uh, state the grahastha state then he goes to one person and then so like this kshatriya also same thing and vaishya also same thing shudra also he will have to go to all this ashramas right or or it can so happen that whole life he'll be brahmacharya only right he he will he will be you, sanyasa sorry you you could you could uh, be a student you could be a student and that decision wouldn't be a choice that we make that's what the guru will will uh, recommend and approve so if there is a person like uh, prabhupad mm-hmm. he was a grasti then he became a retiree and then he became a renunciate however his spiritual master bhakti siddhant saraswati thakur Ma- maharaj he was a brahmacharya through his entire life from brahmacharya he went straight to sanyas so there are there are uh, instances that you don't have to go through this entire cycle of the ashrama but keep in mind that is not our decision to make because our decisions could be um self mot- some motivation or some interest is there it's the guru to whom we have surrendered he knows us better than we know ourselves so if there is such a situation we request the guru and the guru seeing our tendencies the guru seeing our nature will say no it's better you get into the grastha life because if someone maintains brahmacharya and cannot keep up his vows or take sanyas and cannot keep up his vows it becomes a huge roadblock on the spiritual progress so that's where the guru steps in and he does it of course there are people who um renounce everything in a um impulsively or when they are overwhelmed 
with the responsibilities, you know, I just don't know. I just throw my hands up. That is uh, Markat Vairagya. There are different types of Vairagya. Sanyasa, Smashan Vairagya. I mean, different types. So that's not really the true. Uh, and actually, incidentally, Sanyas, uh, a person, even the Grihastha, married person, can have Sanyas is number one, a state of consciousness. It's not necessarily the orange robes and the pridandi. Uh, these are externals, but internal is consciousness. So sannyas is where the entire mind, word, deeds is focused exclusively, nothing else but seva. Grasta also, they can mold their lives in such a way that you have uh, mind, words, and deeds entirely to Krishna. In our congregation, we have, I always call uh, Adya Madhupati Prabhu. He is a white-robed sannyasi. And many may not know when he got initiation from his Gurudev, uh, Srila Jayadvaita Swami Maharaj, he got first and in his second initiation together and Maharaj was willing to award him the third initiation, which is sannyas initiation. First initiation, Harinam Diksha. Second initiation, Brahmana Diksha. Third initiation, Sanyas Diksha. But he said it is out of respect. So Maharaj considered Madhupati Prabhu qualified to receive the formal Sanyas initiation. But he says it's out of respect for your aged parents and the responsibilities that you have towards them. So Madhupati Prabhu has chosen to remain a Brahmacharya. He has chosen to remain. And his Gurudev has approved of it. So yes, he is, he may seem to be like he goes for his job, he's working, but his mind is fully, words and deeds are fully Krishna conscious. Fully Krishna conscious. So that's a very good uh, inspiration or example for us in the Grasti life of how to uh, uh, live our, our lives. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Hare Krishna. So, the traits of uh, the Brahmanas and the other class, okay, what you we've so far been discussing is we utilize our propensities in service of Krishna. And the earlier slide spoke about why, what's the basis of doing that. So, Brahmana, his qualities is in the mode of goodness. So you remember we spoke about goodness, passion, and ignorance, Sattvat, Rajas, and Tamas. So here are these nine dominating qualities. When I say dominating, means this is the go-to or the natural tendency of the uh, person, natural tendency, or you can say a default setting, peacefulness, purity, honesty, religiousness, okay? Then we have the Kshatriyas who are in the mode of passion is uh, heroism, uh, courage, leadership qualities. So these are Kshatriyas. Then the Vaishya is in a mixed mode. Uh, they are in passion and ignorance. So typically they are the business people, business folk, tradesmen, cow protection, and then we have finally the Shudra, who is in the mode of ignorance. And what he does is labor and serves other. So a Shudra achieves perfection in life by sticking to his role and doing this. Likewise, the Vaishya. So Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, uh, it's better to do your own duty imperfectly than to do someone else's. So jumping and hopping, oh, I'll try Brahmana if it doesn't work for me. Let me go to Vaishya. Oh, let me try Kshatriya. Let me try Shudra and see which is best. You know, try before you buy kind of a scenario. That doesn't work. That doesn't work. You may find success. A Shudra may find success as a uh, leader, but it will only mess things up. All these things are temporary. In the long run, it comes back to bite us. And to know what all this is, one is we have our own our tendencies that we are aware of and how and what it actually is. You need the shelter of a guru 
who would guide us? Hare Krishna. So here, here we'll go into a group discussion, Prabhu's Mataji's. So we have the tendency, there's an example put here, what is the opportunity and what is the challenge? So how, whatever is the tendency that we have, a natural inclination, how we can use it in seva, and then what are the hurdles we may encounter or what is the downside, what are the risks? So for example, creativity is a tendency. Yeah, creativity comes in the mode of passion. The opportunity, you can create new recipes and make bhoga. Oh, Krishna. Music, you can compose new tunes. Painting. All these are creative activities. We can use this. What is the challenge? Because that mind is so active, we could speculate when we are hearing or reading, you know, come up with our own theories, new, new theories we concoct. Listen a little bit over here, come up with something new and present it. Wow, 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 people will like it. So this is one example. Now it's open to all, you all can unmute. And, uh, you know, let's go through what are the tendencies, opportunities, and challenges. Hare Krishna. Prabhuji, can I try? Please. Uh, Hare Krishna. Uh, if my tendency is to listening katha or go to the lectures, so if it is the tendency, what will be the opportunity and the challenges? Correct. So if we can bring it a little bit, uh, listening to katha, what makes yeah. you listen to katha? Like uh, I'm a housewife, so um, like apart from cooking and sending your kids to the school and all so uh, after that i get lot of time so uh, i usually prefer to listen uh, bhagavad katha or i go to the google and surf for the uh, story related to krishna or jagannath ji like that so this is this was my question okay so this is what it comes down to is you're looking for something which is giving you a higher taste or something over and above the mundane. Like you have a lot of time, you could spend your time on Netflix, sense gratification. But mm -hmm. you're looking at going something, actually even altruism is a type of sense gratification, but you're looking for something above, a higher taste. Let me put it down as a higher taste. Actually, I'm not interested in Netflix or any kind of movie, not from the uh, kid. When I was uh, from the childhood also, I was not uh, much dragged in this stuff. So, uh, uh, yes, I have went to see, like I have went to movie and watched movie. I'm not saying that I've never been to uh, uh, cinema hall and all. But yes, now, uh, like uh, listening to Katha, it, uh, you know, uh, it satisfies me. Like it, like it's a... Uh, Mm, I feel very good yeah. after listening that. Yes, sure. Very nice. So what this is, is Mataji, uh, it's how you're using your time, right? You have some time available and this is in the mode of goodness. So rather than chasing basal uh, pleasures and sense gratificatory pursuits, you're doing something higher than what is the um, regular and most do it. So as you said, the opportunity is Katha reading and there are infinite, infinite manner of which you'd be able to do. Uh, any seva is basically will fall into this higher taste uh, umbrella. Under that, it comes under. So for Katha, it's not just a 7 to 8, 8.30, whatever we do, Bhagavad Gita. It can, you could literally do it anytime. There is so much material available thanks to internet. There are so many sites 
uh, where you'll get bona fide. You know, you can have lectures, you could have, uh, you could read Prabhupada's books. Prabhupada's books itself is like an ocean. No need to go anywhere. No need to start from the small books and then come to the uh, bigger books. Spend your time doing that. Uh, sharing uh, whatever we know. Uh, you don't need to be an expert. Uh, you could also be distributing these literatures on book distribution. That also transforms uh, one's consciousness. So there are many opportunities to uh, uh, dovetail this natural tendency to go above and beyond the base uh, things that make us happy and uh, engage all that in Krishna's service, right? Now, what yeah. is the challenge? What do you think would be the challenge? And this is open to all, okay? Everyone can uh, raise, uh, can make a comment and share their realizations. Please don't feel shy. That's how we let we learn. Um, it becomes deeper. With the good challenge that I'm facing is I have listened so many stories, but to be frank enough, I don't remember the stories. Uh, oh yeah, I listen the story, I understand. But after a certain period of, period of time, I forget the everything. Yeah, yeah. So this is the challenge. Correct. The so we can have uh, forgetfulness, and I have the similar situation because now I'm aging, so it's a natural. <laughs> when somebody recalls me the story again, I oh yeah, this was the story. But uh, for the certain time period, I forget everything. So yeah. this. Yeah. So this this situation, Mataji, forgetfulness is a, a condition. And whenever you forget, just think about it. One way, how you can say like a consolation prize is Krishna says, remembrance and forgetfulness both come from me. Both come from me. So what we should do is the story is nice. We should know it. More important than the story is the essence. What is it conveying? What is that message of that story? Yashoda Mai, you know, when Krishna, as a seven, eight-year-old boy, used to take the calves of Rindavan and go with his gopas, the sakhas, to graze the cows in the forests of Rindavan. They used to all go bare feet. And Mother Yashoda used to say, you know, my Lalla's feet is so tender, it's soft, like a lotus petal. Mm -hmm. And going through all these pebbles and thorns and God knows what all is there, how much it would be hurting him. Yeah. And her motherly affection, she told Lalla, I'm going to be making shoes for you. So Lalla said, Maya, if you make shoes for me, you have to make shoes for all my sakas and you also will have to make shoes for all my calves. Now, Nand Maharaj had about 900,000 cows or maybe more. Mm -hmm. This is what Krishna said. Now, what is, what is the lesson? What is the instruction we can get? This is the pastime. Yeah. What is that we can get from here? One, we can understand a lesson is that Krishna always thinks of his devotee always thinking of his devotee and his companions. He serves them. The devotee serves Krishna and Krishna gets great joy in serving his devotees. He never abandons them. Mm -hmm. This also talks to the opulence, one of the opulence, you know, Bhagavan, Bhagavan, possessor, Bhaga is opulence, possessor of opulences. Six major categories, one of that category is renunciation. He has everything, but he's totally renounced. He's totally renounced. So if we catch on to the instruction, of course, if we can recollect, it's very nice because it helps us absorb that pastime. It helps us absorb the instruction and the essence of that instruction. And also tomorrow when we're sharing it with somebody, it becomes more uh, relatable. Mm -hmm. So if we say Krishna has this opulence of renunciation, how? That's the next question. That's a normal question. Okay, so there are these pastimes. When he had married, 
the 16,000 queens, 16,108. He would get up early morning and do his sadhana. He doesn't need to do it. You are setting an example. So, essence is very, very important. As long as we can latch on to the essence. And the other thing is by repetition. And when you talk, if you tell your children these stories, if you hear something, tell the children these stories. If you have Krishna book, read the Krishna book. Then that becomes, that becomes the uh, difficulty we may have in remembering. Will uh, gradually, it won't be so difficult, but keep in mind, uh, latch on to the essence. No. The other challenge which may come on a higher taste is that I may think I am advanced because Maya is very insidious. She can trick us even when we are doing acts of devotional service. She can trick us into I am the doer and then from there the expectations start coming in. Expectations as in, Prabhuji? Expectation as in wanting to be recognized, wanting to be respected. Like because there's this higher taste, I do Kathan reading. And with Kathan reading, I get knowledge. And then I can recite my shlokas and I can give great classes. And everyone goes, wow. Mm -hmm. And then that sense of accomplishment, I did something. Proud. Pride. Pride. The ego gets inflated and our ego goes and stands on the pedestal of seva where we have to be dasa, 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 nu dasa, servant of the servant of the servant. And it's very easy to get tricked. When we develop, we start giving up the lower tendencies and gradually consciousness gets elevated. Maya can come from anywhere and she'll pull us in. So there is that risk of how to stay humble. So how to come out from that trap, Prabhuji? Uh, association yeah. through knowledge, association, practice. So the more we read, the more we hear, the more we'll start understanding that I'm not the doer. I'm just a vehicle. I'm just an instrument. What I'm speaking right now, it's not me. I'm just like a loudspeaker. Mm. Loudspeaker is just vibrating the sound based on whatever electrical impulses it's getting. That electrical impulse is coming from somewhere else. There's a different source altogether. Mm. My job is just to make sure I'm repeating what I'm saying. And there is no accomplishment. There's no accomplishment which I have. It is all coming through the mercy. And when we can actually, one is we say it, but when we can actually feel it, when we can actually feel it, that's when, that's when the uh, progress and elevation in our consciousness happens. But we have to be very, very careful. Mm -hmm. We have to be very, very careful. Always consider ourselves to be, you know, one uh, in Prabhupada's time, uh, one of Prabhupada's servants came and told him, oh, Prabhupada, such and such a devotee has memorized the entire Bhagavad Gita shloka and he can recite it in 40 minutes or something. Mm -hmm. Because everyone in the whole uh, congregation was so excited. Wow, this person has, you know, it's a great feat. All the shlokas he remembered. Mm -hmm. So Prabhupada was not at all impressed. He says, very good. Let him now live the Bhagavad Gita for four minutes. That would be an achievement. Mm -hmm. Another time a disciple came and told Prabhupada, Prabhupada, I'm your most humble servant. You know, offering his obeisance. Prabhupada looked at him and he said, you're the most of nothing. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yes, Prabhuji. 
so so this is how we should uh, take this opportunity always be grateful it is not our qualifications that bring us into hari krishna it is mercy true babu ji hari krishna hari krishna what else Hare Krishna Prabhu ji yeah prabhu prabhu ji if we have the you know the tendency of doing seva right mm. so you know when we do seva of course there are a lot of opportunity to do the seva now if you have to categorize you do either the seva in the kitchen kitchen of the dd's kitchen and non dd kitchen right so there are a number of opportunities but when it comes to challenges yes the going to a dt's kitchen you have to do you know minimum 16 rounds of at least mala that is what uh, you know krishna prabhu ji advises yeah right but uh, yeah opportunities there are unseen opportunities uh, you know but uh, challenges i can say that yes uh, challenges are we have to make the seva possible you know suppose we have we got allocated some day monday so we have to be there available on mondays right and challenging opportunities come you know office priority comes up and then yeah how i have you know desire to do this seva but we cannot make it because you know some other situation has arisen right mm -hmm. so can sure. we say this one right prabhu ji like seva and then opportunities are yeah the the desire to serve correct Now, there are different degrees or you can say intensity Now, Bhakti Tir Swami Maharaj has said, when the desire to serve is more than what our capacity and capability is, all of us have our own limitations, right? Everyone, right. different degrees, whatever it may be. A mother with a small child, she cannot be coming at uh, three in the morning to do a DT service to wake them up. She has a newborn baby; it is not possible. so there are these limitations we all have as you mentioned you are a professional there are work uh, responsibilities this that we all we all are in it however when the desire to serve so there could be a desire which is uh, like a flickering spark you know and there is a desire which is like a bonfire burning all consuming so when it comes to that state i want to serve beyond whatever as my capacity and capabilities that's when bhakti tir swami maharaj says divine empowerment happens apne bal bute pe on my own ability there's nothing i can do there's nothing i can do typically what happens is that we whenever a seva opportunity comes in we look at it on a doable if able basis meaning to say that i will first check all other things on my plate and if there is whatever space is there oh i can come in now on sunday afternoon and stay for the entire program till end of program because that fits in my schedule and sure i may say that i have uh things to do i have laundry on the weekends i have to do grocery i have to do kids to karate ye what i mean there are never ending yeah that desire is there but that desire becomes on a doable if able basis the other way is when you have this spark a little flame and we build it up into a fire then what happens is it makes space then we get that intelligence when we said divine empowerment of how it can be done rather than why it cannot be done you are not you are not doing one at the expense of the other you are not but it's just a mindset if i have to go at 3 in the morning there are practical consideration it doesn't mean you be impractical which is why we need the guidance of a vaishnava people are initially when they come new 
extremely fired up extremely fired up but a vaishnava will say take it easy take measured baby steps slow and steady wins the race so that way we can uh, uh, get seva done so if we have a propensity to serve then in such a situation the other is any seva is great seva yeah but the problem is so busy there are restriction right i cannot do seva of where i have to take brahman diksha right like then, you, then you... qualify yourself qualify yourself to get brahman diksha right right qualify yourself in such a way like today you may not be initiated correct but then there are uh, there are formalities to take initiation you know the harinam the brahman diksha so be very versatile or uh, uh, you should know what all is required which you anyway done so in your case personally and then have the tadap what you say for tadap anchoring 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 then you get that so you may not be able to do brahman seva today now it doesn't matter prabhu if you are doing brahman seva because brahman seva is for the deity worship on the altar you need to be a brahmana you have to be doing gayatri you have to be doing uh, 16 rounds you have taken your brahman vows uh, you know what there are all these formalities but above and above all this prabhu is the consciousness now there are situations where there are many brahmanas who in spite of having the opportunity to serve the deities personally do not take it doable or fable and there are some who are not brahmanas who want to do it but can't do it so we have to look at it as that any opportunity whether i'm serving the deities on the altar or whether i'm cleaning the toilet and the mess people have made we look at deities as the altar actually the entire temple is the altar the property of the temple it's not just that altar which is cordoned off on which the deities are resting the temple room the lobby the bathroom the courtyard the parking lot the community hall that is shri balram's body shri balram's body that is the consciousness we should develop we heard this in lectures but when we come to the temple we just put our shoes anywhere there is enough space in those shoe closet shoe racks you see there's a big mess all over the place people have thrown masks people have thrown uh, tissue with all snort in it it's a mess and people walk by it but that is the altar altar is very clean altar is very fragrant as it should be but what about the other place isn't that balram's body so if i see a shoe out of place and i pick it and put it back i'm doing deity service i'm i'm serving lord balram nita is on the uh, throne over there right on the altar baldev ji is next to uh, jagannath ji and subhadra ji i'm serving him how is it any different than me actually cleaning the altar in the morning when we wake up the deities and whatever so these opportunities are all there we have to be look we have to look for it and we have to be conscious of it we have to look for it and conscious of it so little little things make a job perfect but perfection is no small job so krishna provides us all these opportunities we don't even look at it john f kennedy was very successful at a very young age and life magazine interviewed him and they asked him to what do you attribute your success towards he says i jump at every opportunity so they say how do you know when opportunity comes calling he says i don't know but i'm jumping all the time what an important what a wonderful attitude so if i'm conscious like this is just an example of balram's body and the altar and uh, there are infinite number of ways we can serve yes we are chanting that is why we're serving suman mata ji loves to read and hear that is seva you make your 
family Krishna conscious. You don't look at my wife, my child. They're Krishna's family and I'm the caretaker. That is also seva. So when our consciousness develops, then our tendency and consciousness develops through knowledge, hearing. Consciousness develops through sharing. Consciousness develops through reading. Consciousness develops through associating, chanting, you know, all these things that we do. Hare Krishna. What time is it? Oh, 8.15. Very good. Anyone has another point you'd like to share? Or we can bring it to a close. Yeah, Prabhuji, now, you know, uh, at least for me, I'm seeing that, you know, I'm sp spreading my seva. Like, you know, earlier I was not doing a Bhagavad Gita book distribution, but I'm very, very regular now in going and distributing Bhagavad Gita book distribution. From past two, three months, it is happening now. All mercy of uh, Srila Prabhupada. It's going good, Prabhuji, definitely. So I see earlier I was not doing it, but now, I don't know, my focus is tilting towards doing this seva only more than any other seva. Continue with it. What happens, Prabhu? We all have a certain, we are human beings, right? We are, right. We are unique. We are Jivatma. We are unique. There's no person like Bimal, not just your uh, way you look, but you, the Jiva. There's no person like you. And whatever is your relation with Krishna. Now we don't know what we all know. We are under the category of Das. Thus. In spiritual consciousness, you know the Guru can reveal to you what your what your in in Goloka who you are and what your role is. I could be a monkey in Goloka, I don't know. But everyone in Goloka is Das. Thus. Everyone is serving, whatever be the relationship. So that relationship is very unique, Bhimal Prabhu. And that uniqueness is what you get that taste. For example, you may like sweet and, you know, I like spicy. No, I cannot say you're right or you cannot say I'm wrong. It is, it is something very individual. So similarly, what happens is when we get into seva, there are infinite number of seva and there is something which clicks with us. Our personality or whatever you call it, right? And it gives us a sense of uh, sukun or it makes us you know what it is like you experience book distribution I'm not getting the word for it so we engage more and more in that which is perfectly fine however it will come a stage now we should also be very careful as I said this you know maya can insidiously come into it so if I like book distribution, I like meeting people. I'm an extrovert, correct? That's my nature. I'm an extrovert. So I'm sharing Krishna consciousness. But I have to always be careful that I'm sticking within the guidelines of Guru Sadhu Shastra and I'm not the doer. I may get respect. I may get praise. I may sell hundreds of books. I may be the greatest book distributor. But if this creeps in, we have to be very, very vigilant. Then slowly it starts deteriorating. Then what happens, Prabhu, is if we always stay humble and say, it is not me who is the doer. It is Guru and Krishna. Through their agencies, I'm a representative. I'm just a front end, nothing more. Then automatically, this thing of being connected to just one, I can go anywhere. So if a guru or a leader, a Vaishnav says that, okay, go clean the toilets. I should be ready. Yes, book distribution gives me great uh, pleasure. But I'll do toilet because that's what I'm asked to do. So keeping mine, and that is one of the definitions of love. Love is keeping your desires subservient to that of your beloved. So if Guru says that, okay, you do this, and the uh, temple authority is a representative of the Guru Parampara. If they say do X, but I say, no, no, I want to do only Y. Then 
it becomes what you do is if you serve the vaishnav but what how he'd like to be served not how i want to serve krishna likes to eat butter but i'll say no no krishna i don't like making butter you know what i'll do i'll make uh, soya what they call that tofu aap tofu khao because i like tofu so engage in what you're doing initially it happens and gradually as long as we say we are not the doer gradually our consciousness says it doesn't matter i'm jumping all the time for seva book distribution or something else whatever the uh, authority tells me can i make a point yeah please mataji oh so, sorry sachi rani used to call him mataji i think it's even seva for any kind of seva what i feel is uh, like you mentioned is we should be willing and able to do whatever seva is assigned to us and though we may want to cook in the dt kitchen or do the sevas on the altar as brahmanas um we have to reach that stage so any kind of work that we initially start we don't start at the top level we start with gradually stepping up whether it's work whether it's in the house mm-hmm. nobody becomes a chef from the very first day you first become you know learn how to peel the potatoes before you can make uh, damalo for instance so i think it's very important to step up the ladder gradually yeah. because that not only um makes us more perfect and work wise but also it makes us more firm in our um, belief right so you, instead of just going right on the top and then falling down you climb slowly that makes the base stronger is how i look at it very good excellent point sachirani and also another thing about what mataji was saying about how she listens to stories and she doesn't remember what i found is that if you i don't know if mataji you have kids or you know but when you narrate stories when you when you speak out what you've heard it kind of reinforces what you have read so that's one thing which i have found and that is helpful very good very good thank you thank you for sharing this yes suman mata your hand is up you yes, can just just join in the conversation don't worry yes prabhu ji uh actually uh, it's a very personal question i just wanted to ask that if a, a person is uh, living in a living with a tamoguni family and uh, if she wants to offer uh, uh, food to krishna and radha rani so uh, is it uh, possible to do or uh, we should just um, we shouldn't do it it is possible to do and we can refer to the instructions of the uh spiritual teachers and of course shrila prabhupada's example himself so when shrila prabhupada came to the us he went to butler pennsylvania and he lived with one gopal agarwal prabhu and his mm-hmm. wife he had married an american lady um uh, i forget her name sally sally mataji she recently left her body uh sally mataji now prabhupada is a pure vaishnav now his his food that he used to eat he used to keep it separately but it had to be kept in the fridge and his food was kept next to all the meat and you know whatever else mm-hmm. is there just think about this prabhu yeah, part yeah, prabhu part didn't uh, um, throw a tantrum or anything he adjusted he adjusted so what is the instruction we get from this there are circumstances prabhu prabhu pad has instructed make the best out of a worst deal so in our lives there are some families which are totally against 
the person, family member, whether it's a son, wife, husband, whatever, becoming Hare Krishna. Mm-hmm. And they actively say and do things to discourage the person. And there are some who are Hare Krishna, the entire family. I have a child in my Sunday school and uh, Kamakshi, mm-hmm. sisters. They joined Hare Krishna. The family came in contact with Hare Krishna in September, October of last year. So five, six months ago. So the Mataji, Nitya Mataji, was looking information on homeschooling. And then she came upon the Hare Krishna site for homeschooling children. And uh, that's how she connected. And then she uh, came in contact with uh, ICNJ. She lives in New Jersey. Her daughter is in my class. Her eldest daughter is 10 years. Uh, Kamakshi in my class is 9 years. She has uh, Kamavati, who is 5 years. And uh, the youngest one, Rukmini, is uh, 3 years. Correct? Yeah. Now, they are so uh, spontaneously taken up to Krishna consciousness that these two girls... The older two sisters, recently on Gaur Purnima, they took vows of chanting. Now, Mataji, with four small children, engages in seva to the best of her ability at home and even outside. Now, she took her children. There's another devotee who's now in hospice uh, Mm -hmm. care, end of life uh, situation. So she used to go with these four small girls and visit Prabhuji and sing kirtans and read uh, Bhagavad Gita to him. Now that is a seva which she does and more importantly, through her example, she's teaching the children of how to be para dukha dukhi. We hear this philosophy of Vaishnavas, para dukha dukhi. Now this Mataji has spontaneously all, even a husband, they're all in Krishna consciousness. She recently sent me a WhatsApp message. I'll just read it out to you. And of course, I have a permission. She says, yes, please. Because it's so inspiring. Uh, Bear with me a second. Yeah, here it is. Thank you, Prabhuji. Like I was giving an update of her child. And I said that she's doing well in class. She is attentive and participates frequently. And then she replied, Thanks, Prabhuji. Someday she gets tired and distracted. I'm trying my best to keep her fresh when she comes to Sunday school. Now see this next sentence. Iskon is our happy place. I cannot believe how nicely all my family has gelled, including Prabhu, which means her husband, and all the kids. All glories to Prabhupada, infinite blessings of Krishna. Right? Now, there may be a situation of here, all of them, all six of them have spontaneously taken up to Krishna. So it's a very conducive environment. Now, there may be some families where there is resistance. Like, for example, you may give up onion, garlic, meat. But the family is meat eater. What do you do? Mm. So it has to be explained in a nice way, not in a confrontational way, that this is what is my practice. This is what is my, I like to do. And there are devotees who also cook meat for the family. Yeah. And they are completely over and above and they do their own uh, thing. So this so is after the, cooking uh, uh, meat, uh, uh, one is going to chanting. So uh, they have to take bath and then go to the in there front is of no, the There is no other ways. In chanting. There is no restriction in chanting, okay. but it okay. is a good practice because if we keep our externals clean, Mataji, mm-hmm. then it helps the internal keep the internal clean. Yeah. So, like they say, even in the restroom, you could be doing chanting, japa, yeah. mahamantra. There's no restriction of time, place, circumstance, condition. 
and uh, uh, onion garlic uh, is not offered to krishna no prabhu ji no 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 there is a list of food patram pushpam phalam toyam mm -hmm. so based on that and if there is any doubt always ask a vaishna a senior vaishna or a vaishnavi in the congregation mm -hmm. this is what it is because the practical application is when the transformation happens mata ji when we just get information we understand you know all these things you need there is information which is mental realization comes through practice so when we put that essence into practice ah then we know this what it means otherwise you can even tra train a parrot to recite shlokas what's yeah. the big deal so yeah. yes there are a list of do's and don'ts we try our best to follow like i know bimal prabhu personally and bimal prabhu is an extrovert he speaks well so he engages in meeting new devotees when they come to the temple how can i help you whatever prabhu ji i'm here all because of bimal prabhu ji only huh? <laughs> yeah yeah because uh, in the book distribution uh, he came to my house and uh, i was like i was so curious yeah yeah i know about the iskan i want to uh um, no more about this and uh, because uh, like uh, two years back also i was doing hari krishna i was doing chanting but it was not up to 16 round it was only two round or three round not more than that but now i can do 16 round of chanting in one go uh, but some day you know uh, it happens i won't able I, i won't be able to uh, chant you know like four round or five round only uh, that's why what you should do mata ji what they recommend what mm -hmm. the acharya tell us is decide on a number which is no matter what happens you'll do it yeah one number whether it is one round 16 rounds or whatever yeah and that is not uh, subject to any condition recently uh, his holiness kadam kanan swami left his body yeah. cancer had ravaged his body he couldn't even speak but he continued doing his japa because he has taken the vow and his guru maharaj jayadwaita swami seeing his condition gave him permission he says you've done enough in your life there's no need for you to chant and maharaj cried and begged he couldn't even speak mata ji mm. he said please don't give me that order please don't give me that order just think about it mata ji yes and when we have this burning intensity so make a decision of a particular round and stick with it no matter what and then gradually increase it yeah otherwise some day 16 then you know whatever happens it becomes four mm -hmm. and, and this up and down like savita rani sachi rani was mentioning Sachi Rani incidentally is my wife, so that's why I'm calling her Sachi Rani. But sometimes I'm calling her Mata Ji. Our culture is to address all women as Mata Ji. So she was mentioning, right? You first learn how to peel the potato, then you can become a chef. Mm -hmm. Baby steps, assured steps, and in Japa, make it something which is uh, non-compromise. Yeah. then you'll see your progress happen fast hari okay. krishna thank you, thank you. prabhus mata ji very good anyone has any other question we've gone say 35 or a comment or we'll bring this to a close now emangi mata kanika and shweta oh or mata ji is bimal prabhu dropped out <laughs> actually even everyone is a um, you know there's only one purusha krishna and everyone else is in the female to be enjoyed hari bol thank you we'll bring the class to a close shila prabhupad ki jai anchakalpa tarubhyascha kripa sindhu bhyai vacha patitanam pavane bhuvishnavi bhyo namo namaha
परंतरा श्री भगवत गीता की हरे कृष्णा केशवं कृष्ण दामोदर अच्छुत केशव कृष्ण दामोदर बना राय राजा देखी